Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. What are we going to do today? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do today. <laughs> the never-ending pile of odd jobs around here is getting pretty big again, so we're going to uh, get to work on those. First job today is to try and make one engine stand out of these parts of two engine stands that we got at the auction. I think the best bet is to try and put the red one together. It seems to be the one that's mostly complete. There's everything for the red one. Um, the only thing that was missing from it was these, which I took from the yellow one. The yellow one is missing the, the big main beam that goes back and forth across the bottom of the post that these legs attach to. Um, so it's easier just to put the red one together. Uh, also missing from the red one is one wheel, so we'll just take the, the matching pair of wheels from this one and put it on the red one. Right, there's the first step, we have wheels. Running nice, beautiful. Now we're getting there. So this piece goes in and there's a captive nut inside the end of it so this bolt goes up through that and screws into that so it all one bolt holds the whole thing together now we just have to put a little front cross piece on it it's got two casters on it the wheels that were in these casters uh, were these big heavy cast wheels they obviously don't belong to them the, the, the bolt hole in the caster are three eighths and the bore in these are half inch I was hoping I could find a little piece of tube that I could just make a, a bushing for these and leave 3 8 bolts in them, but uh, I cannot. So I'm just going to drill these out to half inch and put a half inch bolt through the whole works. Well, that's coming together nicely. Now we have to put the rotating head on it and get that all sorted out. All right, went pretty well. It's all back together. Ready to do some exciting jobs uh, down the road somewhere. All I got left to do with it is find um, a piece of iron pipe or something that I can use as a turning handle. It's even got a rack somebody made to, to hold it. But um, uh, that can wait. I, I just don't have anything I can use at the moment. But something will turn up. It always does. Next on our job list, we're going to swap the wheels on the old Ram 1500 here. Um, we're finally getting some nice, nice sunny days, and I think we can take the winter tires off and put them away in the barn until next year. So first thing I'm going to go around and crack all the nuts loose with my breaker bar here. I got the jack under the lower control arm. We'll take it up a little bit. We got to get it off the ground and then some because... These are the 17 inch wheels with the smaller tires. That's what I run in the winter. And our summer ones are the, the 20 inch ones. They're a little bit taller. There we go. Now I'll just use our little, our little gun here. All right, where's my chalk? Chalk. So I'm going to mark this to where it has to go back on when we put them back on in the fall. Um, I do my tires in a forward cross. So basically the front ones go straight back and the rear ones cross over to the front. You can only do that with symmetrical treads. Or I guess uh, some asymmetrical tread you can also do that. If you've got directional tires you can't. You can only go front to back on the same side. Otherwise, you have to have the tires actually flipped on the rims to cross them over. So this one in the fall will be going back on the right rear. So I'll mark that in a couple of spots. Well, I got it off and just kind of have a fast look at the brakes and stuff. 
truck only has 30,000 kilometers on it. I wouldn't expect there to be anything wrong. It's laced. Look at that. That's rust check oil spray. Yeah, that's caked on there pretty well, isn't it? All right, we'll get our tire and put her back on. Look at the size of these things. Oh, that looks a lot nicer than other ones anyway. And we'll just run these down. And we'll come back with the torque wrench once it's all done and we'll torque them all up. The torque on these is 130. So we get our old torque wrench here and I'll turn it up to 130. And it's best if you can find one for this job, a nice long one, not one of them little short craftsman ones like the one I have in there. It's good for some stuff, but for this I like my long one because 130 is a lot. So we go, let's bring them up, and then we go across. Don't go around in a circle, go across. And then back across. And then back across. And then back across. And then once I finish the last one, I do just go and hit them all again to make sure. All right, times five and I'll see, or pardon me, times four and I'll see when I'm done. This is the last one, we're just finishing up. I'm doing my kind of second go around. Now what is also important with this is that uh, drive a little bit, uh, anywhere from 50 to 100 miles or 100 kilometers if you're Canadian like me, and then get the torque wrench out and hit them again, just to make sure because um, you get one little piece of crap on the back of it, or one of these lug nuts gets a little bit galled, um, they will kind of work themselves loose occasionally. Not all the time, occasionally. And then once you've checked them the second time, you're generally good to go until the next time you gotta take them off. Now I'm gonna put the spare tire back up. Uh, why it's not in there, uh, two reasons. Reason number one, in the fall when I get the truck oil sprayed, I take it down to make sure they get up all around where it is. Number two, because I run the 17 inch wheels in the winter time with the smaller size tire, I mean these are both factory available tire sizes for this truck. You can see the difference in the size. So what happens if <clears throat> I got a flat tire on the back in the winter time and I throw this thing on and I drive very far at all, because this truck has a sure grip axle or a, I think they call it an anti-spin axle now. This difference, uh, this wheel will be turning much faster than this one to keep up and it'll destroy the clutches in the rear end. So I've got a separate snow tire that matches these on a black wheel that I use in the winter time. Now it's out, now that the big wheels are on we can put this one back up underneath. Rather than digging the factory tool out from under the seat, I use this long extension with a eight point or square drive three eight socket on it. And we just put that in there. There we go. Now we can lower the holder down. Here she comes. My arms aren't as long as they used to be. There we go, it's at its end. Now, this is a lot easier in my garage on the smooth floor, but uh, due to there being three 
pieces of farm equipment in there in a thousand pieces. We're not in a position to do this in the garage. Get in there, you turkey. Okay, there we go. So now, we'll just get that up in there. We'll reverse our tool, and up she goes. Nice and tight up against the frame of the truck. Perfect. So the Ram is ready for summer and let's see what else we got to do around here. Next job I got to hang up a new metal sign. We've got quite a nice collection of them here on the inside of the garage door. This is one that my friend uh, Nick from the Real Guy Garage brought me. Pretty neat, eh? Being a PT Cruiser guy. Don't ask me where he got it, but I like it. So I'm going to hang it up right here with my uh, magic pointy screws. All right, that looks good. I could have maybe put it a little further away, but it's there. Next up, we got to put two new air fittings on these two tools. This one, the old snap-on, well, blue point, I guess, air gun. The, um, oh boy, is that in there tight. It got, um, it got dropped and the fitting broke. So I guess we're going to have to put it in the vise. And uh, the other one, the grease gun, it came from my father-in-law. But he, I guess, had a slightly different air fitting than what I use around here. And I can't plug the silly thing in. So, holy lightning. Okay, let's just get this out first. That thing was really in there. In the end, I just took the fitting right out of the gun. You know what? This is something not right with this. The other fitting was only in like a thread and a half, and it was really, really reefed. So we're going to get a, a quarter pipe tap and run it down there and see if we can open this up a little bit. Well, the pipe tap helped a lot. Let us get this thing to go in a few turns. There, that's good. I'll put the spring back in. And this is uh, basically an Ingersoll gun, and I've had trouble with these things leaking around here before. So I'm going to uh, put a little Teflon around here too. I hate leaky air tools. Then there's our trigger spring. And then the last step, a little air motor oil. Just give her a squirt. There. Now we can go ahead and get this one out. Oh boy, that was in there pretty tight too. Okay, we don't need that. And a little Teflon tape. This stuff is a little unwieldy because it's windy out today and I get all the garage doors open. But, there we go. And now I'll have an air-powered grease gun. I'm always behind the times. I had pump grease guns and lever grease guns. I finally get an air grease gun, but everybody's got cordless ones now. I'm, I'm still behind. Just when I thought I was catching up. Oh well, that's how she goes. There we go. Now let's make sure it plugs in. I haven't got the air turned on right now, but at least it plugs in. 
The next time my dad agrees something, we'll probably try it on our old 8N over there. That'd be good. Oh. Well, that's it for another load of odd jobs. I, I'm sure the job basket will be full again before we know it. And uh, I guess until then, thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.